Hello everyone, and welcome to the 41st episode of Analyzing Evil, featuring Vincent from Collateral. Vincent is the kind of smooth-talking down-to-earth villain who makes us all think twice about just who it is we're looking at. Is he a soulless sociopath with no conscience, making a living out of his lack of remorse? Is he a man who was transformed by his own hardships into a nihilistic cynic, capable of committing the terrible crimes he commits? Or is he something else entirely? In this video, we'll be going through everything we're given about Vincent in this film to answer that question, giving you the full picture of an enigmatic man who simultaneously charms and terrifies us viewers. Without further ado, let's begin. We'll start with something that's integral to Vincent's character, his philosophy on life. Vincent is a man who has an enormous amount of empathy and a distinct lack of it at the same time. He's disgusted with the disconnect that has happened between the common man, much preferring honest and direct contact with people to the soul-crushing existence people live in big cities. There's no emotion there, no human interaction, just a bunch of mindless meat sacks on autopilot, their concerns extending only to themselves and those in their immediate vicinity. People who can sit next to a person on a train and not even notice that they're no longer alive. Vincent is a man who would by all accounts make the perfect neighbor, a person who would be concerned with their community and the lives of the people in it, a man who would enhance the lives of those around him and in return receive what he longs for, a sense of belonging and the unique human experience you can only get from a tight-knit group of people. Perhaps this comes from his supposed abandonment issues, as if his story about moving from home to home only to come back to an abusive and distant father is true, then it could be that Vincent, in contrast to many individuals who go into the foster system, had good experiences from his time being in a home where he was welcomed among others, a place where he could belong and receive genuine emotional connection from people. Compare that to what his home life may have been like, with a father only concerned with what his son lacks, shortfalls that his father saw in himself and projected onto his son, leaving the young, personable Vincent, isolated and wanting for a life that brought him fulfillment instead of emptiness. As he grew older, it could be that Vincent, with a background of poverty and disadvantage, found for himself opportunity in the military, where he learned the quiet precision and killer intent of a veritable hunter of men. And I think it's quite possible that somewhere in the world, Vincent has a family of his own as I imagine that a man who's so cynical about the disconnect between the populace at large would be keen to start his own family in a small community of his choosing. Now in stark contrast to this is the fact that if Vincent doesn't know a person, he could care less whether they live or die, especially if it's one of the aforementioned soulless zombies he sees occupying big cities. To Vincent, nothing matters. Everybody has to die sometime, and his work only brings that ultimate end to someone a little bit sooner. There is no good reason, there is no bad reason, to live or to die, so says Vincent. A life is just another speck on a small planet lost amongst millions of galaxies, and who even cares, on a grand scale, in what way they die or who kills them? Well, depending on who you ask, he's right about that to an extent, but he's also very wrong. We care, that's the point. It doesn't matter if there is or isn't anything greater out there. What matters is here, and now, what matters are the people whose lives are ended against their will, and the people who are affected by horrible acts of murder. There's truth to what he says about societal disconnect, but even if the people riding next to a dead man on a train don't notice, his family and friends surely will, as this person is still a person, no matter how the world around them handles their passing. Without a doubt, Vincent is a nihilist, and for some that's not exactly a bad thing. You could be a nihilist that finds beauty in the absence of what you perceive as purpose. As if nothing at all matters, then everything matters, because everything is on the table. You can be the decider of your own destiny, without limitations, an infinite well of possibilities before you, unrestrained by cosmic influences. But not Vincent. He's the kind of nihilist who peers into the void of the universe and finds that since nothing matters, what does it matter what he does? What does it matter if he murders people? People who ultimately mean nothing to him. All that matters is his own will to provide for himself and the advantages he can take in ensuring a prosperous future for himself and his own. Now the thing about Vincent is that due to his abundance of empathy for those closest to him, he's actually a genuinely likable and amiable guy. He knows how to speak to people on a human level when they respond in kind. He has a warm smile 
and a genuine disposition that sets him apart from your typical bad boy hitman who says little and broods much. He's even motivational and concerned for Max's overall well-being, actively trying to get him to improve his life and constantly giving him words of encouragement throughout the film. However, this personality and his beliefs leave us with a man who's both immune to the horror of things that happen around him and one who's casual in dealing with these terrible situations, completely glossing over the things he's putting Max through with sarcasm and wit, acting as if what's going on is about as big a deal as the sun rising. And that brings us to what Vincent does in the film, which is honestly quite terrible. Vincent has been contracted to kill five individuals who are witnesses in a criminal case against his employer. Now, some of these kills can be categorized as a criminal killing criminals and are therefore more forgivable as they're engaged in the same type of lifestyle that Vincent is, making them far from innocent. So what do we know about these people? We know that Ramon was nothing but a petty drug dealer and Sylvester Clark was a criminal lawyer, but we don't know to what extent Daniel Baker and Peter Lim were involved in this business. If I had to guess, Daniel was probably running drugs out of his club and Peter Lim was either an importer or distributor. So that leaves us with four people involved in the drug business who are certainly guilty of sowing their own brand of evil to a certain extent. But does that mean they deserve to die? I'm going to say no. Punished, definitely. But being marked for death because you're testifying against someone isn't a good reason for someone to die. In fact, it's a terribly selfish reason that's only happening because of either one man or a group of people's desire to save their own hides. There are a few more criminals who end up losing their lives at the hands of Vincent, those being the two thieves who stole from Max and him and all the people he killed in the nightclub pursuing Peter Lim. The first two, they didn't deserve it either. A pistol whip to the head and a few blows to the stomach to get their stolen items back, sure, but to kill them is beyond extreme and definitely not the way a situation like that should be handled. As for the nightclub, these killings have the distinction of being done in what you could call self-defense. But this self-defense would have been wholly unnecessary if Vincent weren't in the club to kill another man in the first place. With these not-so-innocent men dead, that makes 12 unjustified murders committed by Vincent, which makes him a pretty abhorrent person. If these were the only crimes that Vincent committed in this film, you'd at least be able to say that the only people he harmed were criminals, even if that's still a terrible thing to do. However, it's his murder of two innocents and his willingness to kill other innocents that elevate Vincent from more than just a man willing to kill criminals for monetary gain to a cold-blooded and heartless individual who has no mercy for those who stand in his way. Vincent constantly has his trigger finger ready, as we see when Max gets stopped by the cops and he's more than willing to dispose of them if Max can't get rid of them, showing us that nobody is safe as long as they stand in the way of his mission. Outside of that prospect, there's also the fact that after meeting Max's mother, Vincent lets Max know he'll kill his mother on his way out of town, a promise that I'm sure Vincent would keep if it came down to it. Then of course, there's the fact that one of his targets is simply a lawyer doing her job, someone who, while in a profession that has its risks, certainly shouldn't be expected to suffer this consequence, as she doesn't deserve to die for doing her job. With that, we already have enough to give us the idea that Vincent is an awful person. But to further compound that, we have the fact that he murders two innocent people, those being Detective Fanning and the security guard at the courthouse, not to mention the casual torment he puts Max through by forcing him to be his driver during his killing spree. Fittingly, this all comes to an end by the hand of this man, a man who was trying to protect the last person on Vincent's list, an innocent woman whom Vincent had been goading him into contacting all this time, a strange coincidence to end a strange night. And at this end, as just another unknown man dying on the LA Metro, who was Vincent. He was a good-natured, intelligent, and charismatic man with a calming and relaxed personality, a chameleon able to adapt to any situation he was given by reading people and acting accordingly. He was a man who enjoyed personal human contact and the deeper emotional attachment that came with community, friendship, and family, one who detested the disassociated populace of the new modern age. Unfortunately, those rather wholesome characteristics are tarnished by his own brand of nihilism, a nihilism that causes Vincent to view humans who he has no association with as nothing more than empty souls to do with as he pleases. He's not a malicious person, but is instead 
one who has the ability to turn on and off his empathy when it suits him, a man who has absolutely no remorse for people who he views as just another unimportant grain of sand in the universe. Vincent may not be the most terrifying villain in the traditional sense, but the way he's able to murder people without batting an eye, never breaking from his outer persona as a normal human being, is something infinitely more terrifying than a monster in plain view, as a man like Vincent could be anywhere at any time. Max characterizes Vincent as a sociopath, but I wouldn't go so far to make that claim. Vincent clearly has identifiable emotions and empathy, and though he has some of the hallmarks of a sociopath, he's not truly a sociopath. Instead, somewhere along the line, through trauma, education, or something else entirely, Vincent found it easy for himself to simply turn off his empathetic side, making him able to excel in a gruesome profession such as his. Vincent may not be a sociopath, and he certainly has some admirable qualities, but he is without a doubt a brutal, ruthless, and remorseless merchant of death, one who operates by his own set of morals and warped worldview, a worldview that takes this likable man and transforms him into a person who radiates a quiet and calculated evil. Thank you all for tuning in to this episode of Analyzing Evil, and I hope you've enjoyed. What are your thoughts on Vincent? Did I miss anything? Let me know down below and leave a suggestion for a villain you'd like to see featured in a future episode while you're at it. If you liked this video and want to see more like it appearing in your feed, click the subscribe button to keep up on the latest episodes, and feel free to leave a like while you're at it. Thank you once again to all of my existing subscribers for your continued and incredible support. If you'd like to support the channel even further, consider signing up as a patron over on Patreon. You can find a link to Patreon down in the description. Thank you to everyone who signed up so far, and a most vile thank you to those whose names you're seeing on screen now. Join the channel's Discord server to interact with myself and the community, and follow me on the social media platforms listed in the description for occasional updates on the channel. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll be seeing you soon.